In this week's episode, Robert helps me find a gremlin. I finally get the E39 rolling again. And we try some fancy filming. Good afternoon, Morgan, and welcome to the series finale of our E39 restoration. But first, a 30 second recap. After a complete front suspension refresh, we set about dismantling the rear subframe. Along the way, there were a few kaputskis, but eventually the refresh subframe went back in the car. Clearly it wasn't exhausting. So let's find out what I did to get it to go out with me. Well this gasket is exhausted. And we find a classic while you're in there job to fix. <laughs> now let's remove the mount for the gearbox so that we can change the pushing out. Quick and easy way to support the gearbox while we change out the bushings. So now we'll remove these two nuts to be able to release the bushings from the gearbox mount. So now we have to deal with this broken boat. Before we do that, we can finally get the bushings out. So I'm going to attempt to drill this out. But I have no idea if it's really possible in this location. Now I'm screwing an M8 tap into the hole I just made with the hope that I can chase the threads of the old bolt out and leave the original tapped hole intact. Oh, thanks. Susie, but to be honest, I'm racing on hopes and dreams at this point. <laughs> Looky what we have here.
While we're in here, I'll clean the other threads too. Now it seems that there wasn't really that much wrong with the original gearbox bushings, but when you line them up against the new ones, you can see that after 20 years of gearboxing, there's a bit of a compression. A quick tribute to our threadless friend, who manages to stay upright despite being severely injured. I was trying a new cleaning method because I had run out of soda for my soda blaster. You can have a look at that in episode 6 on the link above. This time we're starting off with some baking soda. To which we'll add some spirit vinegar. We'll dilute it with some water and leave it to sit overnight. The results were rather underwhelming, but I wasn't ready to give up just yet. Two hours later and it didn't look much better, but at least the surface was prepped now and I could take advantage of this cheat mode. This was the home of our threadless friend, so let's see if the new tenant can torque his way into staying put. And now we finally fitted the last set of bushings for this restoration. Whoa! Now we're going to fit some new rubber mounts for the exhaust brackets. And here's a reminder of what the exhaust brackets used to look like before a spot of elbow grease. and the magic cheat mode paint brings them back to life. BMW have put a staggering amount of engineering time into this exhaust mounting system. Well, I, I still think my original S270 can't be far away.
Now we can finally refit the brake calipers to the subframe. not forgetting the brake pad sensor wire. Now we were finally ready to get the rear air springs filled and calibrated and for that I needed the help of my wee bro Robert and his laptop on which he has input installed which is the method we will use to connect to the car's canvas system. Okay. Yeah. So uh, if you're just like looking for the E39, I think this is the E39, is it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you have to put Shift F9, yes. and then you just show the E31, so the 8 series, the 5 uh -huh. series, the E36. But, and then you have E39, and then you can go, for example, for the for the engine. You just like yeah. pick up what kind of uh, Steuergerät, so what kind of ECU you have, and yeah. engine. Exactly, and then she's like saying, oh, I need to jump past the fifth function, Mookie, so... Uh, the, the version? Yeah, version. Might, okay. might uh, cause some faults or something like that. So now we could see that there was an error code on the engine there DMU. In this case, it was a lambda sensor that was reporting values out of range. But at least that meant we had successfully connected to the engine DMU. To connect to the air springs, we have to select suspension, which then gives us access to the air spring option. Little did we know that this blank screen held a hidden surprise for us. <laughs> okay, so you're putting the air springs, so I'm gonna film it. Oh shit! <laughs> wait, 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 I didn't plug in the airbags yet. <laughs> it's not working after the second time, bro, honestly not. Bags aren't even connected yet. <laughs> that's, that's right. I'm gonna go and get the clips and attend the spanner. You know what happened? No. I'm so nervous about breaking these fucking airbag clips. Yeah. And this was precisely the reason why I was so nervous because I had already broken the original clips on the airbags as I was taking them out of the car. And of course, BMW don't sell these clips. You have to buy the entire pipe at a pretty unreasonable cost of about 150 euro. However, I was able to source them individually. I just didn't want to have to pay another 36 euro. So I just put them away and never looked at them again. I just so scared about breaking them. Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna break them. Yeah, yeah, should. Okay, and then just... Yeah, make it look the check. Oh no, I've broken it. Ah. You have the old airbag check? Yep. Just like this, from the other one. I try. Wait. Maybe I should put some grease on there. Okay. Let me get the, uh, Take your time, bro. I also need a little bit. So, I got two rings. Tail between my legs, I went and got two O-rings off the old airbags. What a mistake a to make a. This was my first clue that connecting to the airbags was a bit of a problem.
I was so preoccupied with the mistake I'd made, I didn't realise that Robert was having trouble connecting to the can system for the airbag. At this stage I was just happy that I'd rescued the airbag clip. So I, I took two O-rings from the old airbag. Putting the grease on first. Like a glove, bro. Really? Okay, bro. It's done. Okay, very good. Yeah, so at least the airbags have a chance now. Getting air. That is 20 minutes ago. <laughs> they had no chance of getting air. <laughs> so while I was off getting O-rings, the GoPro was recording the decline of Robert's happiness. <whistles> was all very confusing. We'd been able to connect to the engine DME, but for some reason we just couldn't see the airbag control. Show them my porn <laughs> <laughs> library. <laughs> hmm. And thus begins the long winding road of troubleshooting a potential wiring problem. And before we fall down the rabbit hole, I'm going to quickly jump forward in time and show you where the problem was. Look above you. Yeah, but it's, it's connecting cable, to nothing. And this cable is... So, and the other cable? It should be dead. Okay. Luckily for me, Robert also has a wiring diagnostic. And this lists every CAN bus communication point in the car. Robert's investigation led us to believe that there was a problem with the OBD2 socket, and in particular the terminal labelled X183, giving us a roadmap to pinpoint its exact location. Just like a sat nav, instead of turn by turn, we have pin by pin. And in conjunction with the process of elimination, we used the clamp meter to figure out where the current drain was coming from. We have 4.4 amps, 4.5, okay, so it's still drawing even when the car is... Which was probably due to the short circuit we were experiencing and the lack of communication with the airbag. So you're just taking one fuse out at a time, okay, still the same. I'll tell you when something happened. Two, between 1.9 and 2. Uh, too much. What did you pull out so far? Oh, something happened. Something major happened. It spiked and then it dropped. Whatever you did, it went to 0 0.7, then it went to 4.8, and now it's back down to 2. I think here I will put 11 and 4 out because it's simple using. But I heard a click. So here, why is it actually? What is actually there? What are you measuring? Eleven. 
this is not. There's the gremlin. Is it just a... is it actually a plug? No, no, it's just like a compartment, like the, the thing... Like Not a plug, but a terminal connection point for the four pins that are coming from the diagnostic oh, port. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just like a, conne a connection point. Oh, oh you spliced it. And put it directly into into this okay. uh, X183 or A81, I can't remember which one it is. Okay. And yeah, that's what we have to do. And once once you get get the get these get these nice parts, we just like have to, to change everything. You okay. Know? So, so I now we knew finally what the problem was, and I ordered a new terminal connection block from BMW. That being one side of the problem, we also discovered that one of the wires coming from the diagnostic port to the terminal block clearly had a break and so I spliced in a new wire color coded blue to replace the temporary red one that Robert had put in to prove the problem. After crimping the connectors on, I also went double gloved and soldered them in as well, just to be sure these connections would stay forever. And there we have it, the new aluminium terminal should not corrode like the old copper one did. And now with all the obvious CAN bus gremlins dealt with, it was time to try INPA again and see if we could connect to the airbag. Success! We're connected to the airbag and killed that gremlin. F6. Um, and then you can just like do the hand steuerung, hand betrieb, you know? You know what hand betrieb is? Service? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can like a, a compressor ansteuern. And say from zero to... No, then we just like to do the entire... Yeah, the bag's fine. Whoa! Okay. It's half, the bag is like half. Ah, now the whole axle's going down. Are you filming this? Yeah. Ooh. Wow. Left and right separately? Okay. Oh. So the compressor's definitely working. 
looks like the joints well, this airbag is this bag is definitely full Here's an English translated screenshot of the same reporting window. It shows ride level height of the individual axles and the pressure of the air compressor. I think they are changing. No, no, no. I don't know what, what it was before, but let's have a look. 4.43, I think something like 4.3. Is it No, no, we're just like filling it, bro. Calibrating is yeah, you can calibrate them here. Then you have to do a uh, Fahrzeughöhe abgleichen, and then you have, you have to measure the. I didn't record much of the interior getting dismantled just because we were so focused on trying to find this gremlin. But here's a short run of the interior getting put back together again. the cursed OBD2 socket, but nothing we couldn't fix. Big thanks to my wee bro Robert.
Out with the old, in with the new. That's never exhausting. Now it's time to get the car set up to be able to torque all the suspension bushings. The car has to be at ride height to do this and it's not that easy considering I only have a short scissor lift. However, cheap and simple always seems to work and a set of spare winter wheels works well as a car stand. In an attempt to get my teenager remotely interested in cars, I got him to help me start listing all the torque values needed for every bush and start marking them off as I went through them one by one. Okay, so now you can mark that one. That click in your hair and is the torque wrench telling you to reach the torque. Jordan. I had to take the wheels off to be able to access the last remaining bolts. And this was definitely not my preferred solution, but I had to get the ride height back into the rear axle to be able to tighten the last nut.
and thankfully these two ball joint nuts can be torqued with the axle back onto droop. Now that was exhausting. Now that my teenager had gone back in to play Xbox, it was time for me to tick off the last item on the list. And we have to put the wheels back on and off a couple of times just to be able to tighten the draft shaft nut which is torqued to over 300 newton meters. And after several months work, we're finally ready to lower the 530 onto the ground for the very last time. Well, we hope so. <laughs> this was the first time that this car was going to be driven since we took the axles apart several weeks ago. And I was still really nervous at this point. So let's watch and see what happens. No joke. This is going to be a live recording of the very first drive. Ah! Surprisingly, everything went well, or not surprisingly, because I'd spent a lot of time on this car. And one trip up and down the driveway was enough to convince me to start making my way to the alignment shop, which thankfully was only three kilometers away. So let's go there and get this thing aligned. Thank <laughs> you. 
wunderbar aus. Auch besser als vorher. <lacht> One more job that needed doing was a typical E39 problem and I wanted to replace the bonnet cables in case one day I got stranded on the side of the road. And as you can see here, it wasn't a second too soon. To replace the cables, you first need to get them off the bonnet latches. And unfortunately, that didn't go too well. The old latches were just beyond saving. And so, it was back into the garage for the E39. Because while I had the foresight to buy new bonnet cables, I had no idea I needed new bonnet catches as well. And despite having a completely refreshed driveline, I wasn't going to drive the car in this state. But thankfully these parts are readily available and it didn't take too long for the new ones to come in. And we got straight to work getting them fitted. I promise, that's the last job for this episode. Now let's go and get some kilometers on this baby. Beast. Fucker. <coughs> Thank you.
Sadly, I now have to hand over the keys to my wife, because this is her daily driver. Which gives me plenty of time now to tidy up all this crap. If you're one of the few lucky ones that have made it to the end of this video, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate all my new subscribers, so I've decided to do a bonus episode where I'm going to go through every single part that I fitted to the car, every single price, and all the components that were needed to actually bolt everything together. And as a final treat, this episode will contain every single blooper, kaputski, and general mm up that I made during this entire process. See you next time.